everyone, welcome back to another episode of Attack and Productions. Fluff here, coming back at you with another deck profile. Today we're looking at Starter Ape Koo. I don't know what cute name they're going to end up giving this deck. But for this video, I'm going to call it Starter Ape Koo. Um, looking at the leader, um, actually before we get into that, this deck is, is, is incredible. I would put it on par with something like Trunks Vegeta. It might even be slightly more flexible and responsive than Trunks Vegeta in a couple ways. And I think like if you're bored with playing Trunks Vegeta, give this deck a definite try because this deck is a ton of fun. It has a lot of answers. It has a lot of solutions and it's just a lot of fun to play. So looking at the leader, front side of the leader, we've got some Goku activate main. You can look up to the top, you look at up to 10 cards from the top of your deck. You choose one yellow earthling card with an energy cost of one or one yellow unison with a specified cost of one among them. Add them to your hand and shuffle your deck. Your awakened condition is if your life is at four or less or you have one or more yellow cards in play with Bulma or Yamcha in their name. You get to draw one card, switch one of your energy to active mode, flip this card over, and go down to six life. On the back, we've got the uncontrollable Great Ape Sun Goku Returns. So this is a reprint of the yellow Goku from set three, if I remember correctly. This is a, a reboot of that leader. Um, auto, you choose one of your cards, switch it to rest mode. When this card attacks, choose all of your opponent's non-energy cards. Switch them to rest mode, then choose one. You can either draw a card or add up to one yellow Great Ape Sun Goku Childhood from your deck to your hand, then shuffle your deck. And then it's got an activate battle. If it's your turn, use up to one mono yellow Earthling card with 5,000 power combo from your drop area and a combo with its skills negated for the battle. So it's a great way to defend itself. It's a great way to establish the energy, especially if your opponent happens to KO one of your battle cards on the field. So just making sure that we have the ability to utilize that, get them into our Z energy and move the game forward a little bit is a great way to go. Looking at the deck itself, we play the Unison Bulma Stalwart Adventurer. This has got a permanent, if your leader is a Sun Goku Childhood card, all yellow non-grade ape sun goku childhood cards in your battle area gain 5000 power so our 10ks become 15ks our 15ks become 20ks and then activate main plus two if your leader is a z leader or a yellow great ape sun goku childhood card play up to one yellow non-great ape sun goku childhood card with an energy cost of three or less from your hand or deck um, so we run quite a few different targets to be able to get that off but that's going to be our primary playmaker. And then minus one auto, when your opponent attacks, switch this card to active mode and it gains blocker for the turn. So if you, you need to protect something that's on the field, you can give the unison blocker and block a subsequent attack at that. So I got that. She's, she's a piddly little unison. She only has a thousand power. She's not gonna do much pressure. But that plus two on her front side is huge for making plays. So we do run four of her. And then getting into our Earthling package, we do run two of Bulma searching for adventure. Permanent, if your leader is a yellow Z leader, uh, Sun Goku with, or Sun Goku and its card name, this card gets 14,000 power. So she'll become a 15,000 power swing once your Z awakened. And then auto, when this card is played, you draw one. Auto, discard one card from your hand. When this card is switched to rest mode by one of your skills, you draw one card and switch this card to active mode. Um, so not very early are we going to be activating her effect, but it's a great way to, to establish an earthling in our drop area to utilize our activate battle with our leader. So it's great for establishing that. Um, a bit later when she is... Um, when she becomes a 15,000, it could be a great way to restand her, to get her to swing again. I don't think it works that way. I've never actually had her on the field when I actually go into the Z Awaken. Just being kind of honest with you, it's a really inconsequential part of the deck. The big thing is that she is a Bulma by name. She draws one, and then she's a good target to choose for your, uh, your tapping effect on your leader. So we run four of those. And then for our Yamchas, we run four of them. We run Yamcha Dastardly Bandit. 
almost said something else there. I almost switched the D and the B. Uh, but this is a 4,000 barrier auto. When you play this card, look up to the top five cards of your deck. Add up to one Sun Goku Childhood or Bulma card. Uh, both yellow or one yellow unison with specified cost of one among them to your hand, then shuffle your deck. You shouldn't be missing on this because it'll grab your great apes. It'll grab the Sun Goku Childhood that are just normal Sun Goku Childhood. It'll grab the Bulma. It'll grab the Unison. There's a ton of targets in this deck, so you shouldn't be missing on that. And then Auto Limit 1. If your leader is a Z leader or a Sun Goku Childhood card, when this card is switched to rest mode by one of your leader skills, switch this card to active mode. Choose one of your yellow Sun Goku Childhood cards in rest mode that hasn't attacked this turn, switch it to active mode if you do draw one card. So one of the great things that you can do in this deck is you get to free play a Son Goku Childhood with the Unison. You swing with it, it's in rest mode. You evolve it into a great ape, and then you you swing lead, you tap the Yamcha, you restand the great ape, you restand the Yamcha, and then you draw a card. Um, it's a pretty valuable little draw engine. Uh, when a friend was testing this deck, he thought that you just got the draw no matter what. And the deck was just insane because it kept like a 17 card hand. Uh, but that's not the case. You do have to restand the ape in order to get that draw, so keep that in mind. And this guy will just most of the time just sit on the field to be your top target most of the time anyway. Kind of going into the Sun Goku Childhood engine we've got three of sun goku unbreakable will this is a 5000 blocker when this card is ko'd choose one of your opponent's battle cards switch it to rest mode then choose one yellow sun goku childhood card from your hand with an energy cost of three and play it so we do run a target to play off this this just gives us another blocker and it's another sun goku childhood card if you didn't want to play this you could probably play the no opening sun goku which is the combo play and rest mode Goku. That would probably be just fine, but this gives us an additional blocker. It's a 10K, so if your opponent's not awakened yet, you can swing with it for the 10K and not worry too much there. We do run three of those. The main target that we're going in off of that, or the other target that we're gonna be playing from our unison is Explosive Spirits on Goku. We play four of those. He's a blocker, barrier, auto. When you play this card, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and KO it. And then auto, at the end of your turn, switch this card to active mode and he has baseline 10,000. So he'll become a 15,000 on, uh, on swing because of the Bulma Unison's effect. Uh, basically, you want to see this guy as soon as possible. He's an excellent playmaker for the deck, and he provides a ton of pressure. Uh, he provides a ton of defense, and he can KO an applicable threat on entry. So we want to see these as soon as possible, so we are running the four of. The other non-Great Ape Son Goku childhood card that we play is Son Goku to Lands Unknown. This is a unique barrier dual attack permanent if your opponent has two or more energy, reduce the skill cost of Evolve cards on yellow Sun Goku Childhood cards in your hand by one yellow and one unspecified if their card names don't match the names of any cards in your battle area. So this is how we're going to be able to evolve for cheap. And then activate main limit one for one yellow energy. Switch one of your battle cards or unisons, both yellow and with Bulma in the card name to rest mode, play this card from your hand. So another reason to have the Unison out or to have the Bulma one drop herself out is to be able to tutor this guy out. You're gonna be able to swing twice with him. He's a 15K. And then if you've got the Yamcha on the field, you can evolve on top of him for one energy and then you know get your restands and get your draws that way. So four of these guys, they're super important to see. I've played games where I've not seen that card and it is just a grindy, grindy matchup. Getting into the ape targets that we play, we do play four of the Great Ape Sun Goku Instincts Unleashed. This is our main evolved target for the deck. It's a double strike blocker, 25,000. EX evolved for two yellow and one non-specified. Draw one onto a Go Sun Goku Childhood. So that's going to be just one yellow energy off of the two lands unknown Sun Goku card. And then auto, when this card is played, choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and KO it. And then auto limit one, if your leader is a yellow Sun Goku childhood card or a yellow Z leader, 
When this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, play one yellow Sun Goku card with an energy cost of four or less that doesn't have grade eight from your drop area. So if your opponent gets rid of this card, you get to play another one of these out, or you get to play an Explosive Spirit Sun Goku out, whichever one you truly fancy in the moment with whatever you need. So four of those, super important to see those. Kind of tech choices, Rampage and Great Ape Sun Goku. This is the other choice that we run in the deck. It does uh, cost two yellow energy and then two non-specified. So it's typically four energy to evolve in this card, but with the reduction of lands unknown, it's going to be one yellow, one unspecified. And then it's Critical Blocker, 25,000. Auto, when a card evolves into this card, choose one of your opponent's energy and rest mode. That card cannot be switched back to active mode until the start of your next turn. So this is a great way, especially against a red matchup or a blue matchup, to kind of slow them down and push them off their curve for a turn. It's it's a great way to throw a lot of decks off. You know, just not having one energy can be a big way <clears throat> to slow them down and give you an additional turn to kill before anything happens. So that wraps up the Sun Goku Childhood Engine. Next, we're going to look at our Super Combo lineup. We are running three of the Krillin Moments before Comeback. These are just quality Super Combos that we've talked about before. The fourth Super Combo is the Piccolo and Son Gohan Newfound Might. This also is the Secret Rare slot in our deck. When you combo with this card, you're going to draw a card, tap a card. Then it'll play on um, Swing. It gets to draw a card, tap a card. And its combo cost is reduced by each card tapped on your opponent's side of the field. I've been able to get this guy out on turn two numerous times. Um, it usually gets removed fairly fast. Your opponent doesn't want you tapping down their shit and drawing a card. So this card gets removed fairly fast. But that is our line of super combos. Do bear in mind, you can't run four super combos than the secret rare because it does have super combo in its keyword skills. So keep that in mind. Then we run three of the Mecha Frieza Robotic Repost. These are just staple in yellow decks. There are floodgates of sorts. Um, it does cost your opponent an additional tap whenever they want to attack after this guy is played. Uh, usually we're going to get this down to one cost. So it's a great way to put a 15,000 floodgate on the field. You just have to watch out for counter counters or counter plays that specifically target cards like Robotic Repost that are kind of running around the meta right now. Then we run Swift Retaliation Cooler. I run him at a two of. This could be a three of, but two has served me well. Two will usually get you into one right as you're trying to close out the game, but these are our primary counter counter cards. This is going to counter counter pretty much any counter in the game. So if you're trying to swing for game, your opponent negates, you counter counter, play the cooler, draw a card. If you have six or more tapped cards, then you get to draw another card. It's just a fantastic card. If you're playing yellow, there's no reason not to play this card. Then we run two Turles all too easy. You most of the time don't want to be spending your energy for this. You want to kind of be cycling your apes and doing stuff like that with the deck. So for that reason, I didn't put Turles up to three. But having two for removing two battle cards or removal and draw is pretty good. And being able to put a 20,000 double strike on the field isn't bad. Although I'd say most of the time we prefer to be able to put out an ape if we can. Then we do play one Bergamo Ferocious Roar. Our leader taps at will. So if we're able to tap down, say, a blocker or something or a field card that the opponent has left up, we'll be able to pay two energy, tap down the opponent's two open energy. This is really good against blue. It's really good against yellow. And it's pretty good against red most of the time as well. So just being able to have this card, it's a shame that it's only a one of. I understand why it's at a one of, uh, why it's limit one. But one of these because we can. Because the leader taps cards itself, we run two Putin the Dark Sorcerer. Being able to board one of these as soon as possible is going to slow our opponent's game plan down, especially if they're a deck that's playing battle cards by skills, which are most decks in the format right now. So two of those. Into our extra card lineup, because we are running Robotic Repost, we are a little thick on extra cards, which is absolutely fine. 
we're running Power of Super Saiyan at a one of because we can. If we could run more, we would. We're running three Realm of the Gods Black Kamehameha. It's a great way to disrupt your opponent. It's a great way to activate Poutine. It's a great way to defend yourself, and it's a great way to remove costs. It's one of the more flexible cards in the game right now. So we're running three of those. We're running two Vegeta Final Flash. These are great for baiting your opponent into thinking that they're going to win the game. You have to be careful against red right now, especially with like the SS4 Goku Vegeta. You cannot activate Final Flash on the Go Gogeta Triumph, and to or Triumph together. Um, you just can't activate extra card skills during battles with that card. So do have another out to that card. The ability to combo out, save your secret rare for that swing, something. Run two of I'm the World Champ. Uh, if you have a Son Goku in play, if Son Goku Childhood in play for one energy, you get to draw two cards. It's a great tap target, or it's a great charge target. If you have the Son Goku out, it's a great way to dig through qualities of your deck. I would play more, but I couldn't find the space for it. And then the final card that we run in the main list is going to be Frieza Army Reinforcements. We run that at a three of. Um, just a great negate. You're going down to six on your leader swing. You will probably be able to activate this as you want to activate them. So running three of them is no no biggie. It's the only actual negate that we run besides the robotic repost. So do keep that in mind. Then moving into our Z deck, because we have to consider... The Z deck, the first card that we are going to look at is the Z leader, Sun Goku Growing Up Fast. So is a critical 20k. I, I decided to run this at a 2 of. It is going to cost you a yellow energy and 2 Z energy to be able to go into this. But once your life is at 3 or less, uh, and you send one Great Ape Sun Goku Childhood card from your drop to your warp, you go into this guy, and then auto... Choose one of your cards, switch it to rest mode. When this card attacks, play up to one yellow Bomo with an energy cost of one from your hand or drop. And then activate battle, place all of your Z energy in its owner's drop. Remove one Sun Goku childhood card from your drop, or in your drop from the game. This card gains plus 10,000 power and double strike until the end of battle. At the end of battle, remove this card from the game. So that's why I run two of them. There are situations where you might need to go into this twice um, to, to seal out the game, but it's not too bad if you have to do that. You just have to make sure that you have the Z energy for it. And I wouldn't load a ton into your Z energy unless you're playing out some of your battle cards or something like that. But, you know, play one of these, establish two more, use the activate battle, go into it, then you can see Awaken your leader again if you need to. So we are running two of those. The next Z battle card that we're running is the Oolong Greed is good. I have two of those. The big thing that we're uh, going to do with this is kind of cheeky. Is Once we play our secret rare, we can go into Oolong, choose our secret rare, and then Oolong becomes a 40,000 swing. Even though it's a single strike, it is still just enough to pressure your opponent to keep them from having to take a life. Or if your opponent has their secret rare out, you can copy their power out with Oolong. Just having him there for that option is pretty good. And then the last seed battle card that we play is going to be SS Blue Sun Goku Evolve Defender. Um... You've got him at a 3 of. He costs 3 energy, 2 Z energy, 25,000 barrier deflect. When this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards or unisons in rest mode. Uh, it can't attack until the end of your opponent's next card. I'm sorry, it's leader, unison, or battle cards. So you play this, you choose the you choose a card, it can't attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then if this card in, is in rest mode, when your opponent plays a card, you may place one Z energy in its owner's drop area. If you do, choose one of your opponent's battle cards or unison cards, switch it to rest mode, and negate this skill for the turn. So it's it's kind of like having another poutine out on the field. It does have a cost of putting one of your Z energy into the drop area, but it's like having another poutine 
Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could run one of this Vegeta just to get your life down to the four of, but I'm at seven in the Z deck right now. You could drop a Goku or you could drop an Oolong if you wanted to run one of these, because I think this is definitely worth the consideration of having just to get your life down to four or five so you can activate your negates. But that is the Great Ape Returns starter deck, and I hope you guys enjoyed this profile. I, it's a little long-winded, but those cards are full of text and very situational, very, very picky on when and how you can activate effects. So I wanted to make sure I was reading those off the cards so I conveyed that directly to you guys. But as always, read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to, and fluff out.